If you don't want to have your cute little face on there, it's okay if you shut off your um, video. Not offended by that. And these will be posted later today. Like yesterday's are already up. Feel free to watch them, zip through them, rewind. Don't watch them, share them, don't share them, whatever you want to do. They're for you, they're not for me. And hopefully they'll get better as these seven go on, because right now they're pretty rough. So this is our second session now that we're doing live from KCC, where the lighting is not good for me. And right now there's, we, there's a few of us here in the library learning in person. If you need me, I walk away once in a while. And if you need me, you have the chat or you can always break in and ask me. Admit letting people in and let's share my screen. I'm going to share Google Chrome and share. I try to talk through it out loud. Just so you have an idea of what I'm doing, but it also kind of calms me. So sorry if that's annoying to you. All right, so I have my class of facing up, and now I have to reopen my participants. So I have to let somebody in. I have to reopen my chat. Once I turn my screen, it all, everything else disappears. So, we go to the front. And participants, reach more, and go to chat and admit. This one is smaller. And, all right. I think I'm ready to get started. I'm trying to make sure all my ducks are in row. So if you're in here, you're wanting to learn about Google Classroom. And I think I said at the last meeting that we just had or the last training we just had, thank you for introducing yourselves in the chat. I appreciate that. I actually should have kept it on the screen. Um, I am not the expert on Google Classroom. There are like 100 experts on Google Classroom working in Mashpee schools. So if you have a question about it, your best bet is to ask the teacher next door who uses it because what you guys do with Google Classroom is constant and daily. You get to know about all the updates, all the effect, what you're doing way, way better than me. I only use it monthly. Uh, what I've done for this class is I've come up with more of a collection of resources that you can explore and make your way through. Or if while you're doing that or while others are doing that, you have specific questions for me, I can try and answer them or perhaps someone in the room can answer them for you. This is by no means an advanced Google Classroom. Um, this is more on the side of basic, but the resources that I put in there do have ideas and suggestions that perhaps you haven't tried before. So you might want to take a look at them. Um, there is no assignment for this class. This is more of an exploration time and an opportunity to ask questions. Also, if you have resources uh, that can be used in Google Classroom, I'll be giving you a place to put those to share them with others. So let's get started. Tommy, if you were in here, 52. This is crazy. Could you imagine a room full of 52 people? All right, so Google Classroom it is. I'm gonna be going over the basics or you'll be learning about the basics. We'll be sharing ideas with each other and we'll be spending some time exploring who are at KCC, I know you'll be using Seesaw as well. So don't feel like class has to be your only tool. If you're here to learn more about it, that's awesome, but it's not the end all be all for you guys because you have um, Seesaw. All right, so I've been starting with a video every time. I don't know if my friends in the library can hear on their devices, they're pretty far away from me. So, um, Last time I kind of held up my computer. I'm here in the library, not using a clear touch today, seeing how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play on your video. Hi, every, oh my, mute your mics, mute your mics. Hi guys, hi, so excited to see you, hi. Oh yeah, you have a dog, yeah, she's so cute. Aw, hi puppy. Oh, you have a dog. Well, don't be careful with your Wow, you have a cat. Aw, everyone has cats to show. Awesome. You have a lizard. You have a snake. Nope. Out. Jordan, do you want to try and maybe like turn your turn your camera up so that I'm not looking up your nose? No, no, no. I 
This is kind of like my office. You don't need to see the rest of my house. Oh, you don't have to ask if you can go to the bathroom. You can just go. It's your house. Go oh, wash your hands. No, don't bring your computer into the bathroom. I don't. No one needs to see No. All right. Happy Wednesday. It's Thursday? Wow. Sorry. The days are kind of blended together here. I do see you have your pajamas on today. Cool. Oh, you have pajamas on too. Yeah, they're SpongeBob. Ooh, yeah, rainbow unicorn pajamas. Not everyone's yelling what their pajamas are. Okay. All right. I have a huge announcement. I'm so excited to share. Oh, you can't? Okay. Well, my headphones are plugged in. You can't hear me, so. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? All right. So does everybody see this right here? What we're going to do is, oh, it's backwards? You, okay. So let's try it like this. Is that better? So that assignment is going to be on who, your mom has a question? No, 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 no. You don't, you don't need to take me to your mom. It's no, no. We're in the, okay. Hi, Mrs. Clark. Yeah. Do you think that we could talk later? Guys, we're not, we're not taking our time to talk about Minecraft right now. No, no, I, I do not play Minecraft. So no, on the Minecraft, let's talk about it. No, no to Pokemon too. We're not talking about Pokemon right now. I'm literally teaching a class right now. Oh my, oh! Hi guys, sorry about that. Yeah, no, this is my fancy office when everyone else is being so loud in my house. Yeah. Talk about fractions straight. Who who is listening to Post Malone? So like is that necessary? Ow. So just apply what we've been talking about for the last 30 minutes or so and put that work. Oh, you you just logged in, so you didn't you didn't hear any of that. That lesson there. Awesome. Okay, so I'll just go over that again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow, you guys are all talking at the same time. It's like we're actually in our classroom. <laughs> I miss you guys. I bet you can relate to that. That cracked me up when I saw it. There are so many good videos out there, but that one really hit home. Um, I'm gonna take my mask off because my glasses keep falling off and there's nobody within like 20 feet of me right now. All right, so Google Classroom. What I'm hoping we can do is spend this time exploring or sharing, because I know that there are a bunch of you in this class right now that probably know more about Google Classroom than me. So tune into the chat and tune into what people are asking. And if you can jump in and help, I will be happy to let you do that. But let me bring you to our shared Google Doc so that you can see what I have put in there for resources. And I'll also put the link to the Google Doc into the chat. So this is my Google Classroom. Um, it's like trying to figure out all the documents look the same. I want to make sure it's the right one. So I'm copying the link. I am going to vomit it into the chat and it's going to go to all participants. That's another thing I've been learning. Make sure that it's going to everyone in the meeting. Okay. So if you're not already in here, I know some of you found your way in, which I think is awesome. There are many doors to get into this document, but now here you come. I have put in, because we're only here for 50 minutes. Oh, it's 11.11, make a wish. Um, a couple of things to watch. This one is just a YouTube video on how to organize your Google Classroom. It can become unwieldy pretty quickly. So those are some strategies to help you organize it. I know a lot of people have reached out to me asking about how to do that. Um, this is a Casey Bell article. Casey Bell is awesome. She's the one that does Shake Up Learning and her little emoji has the big high blonde ponytail. She's adorable. So her um, article is more of a read. This one is another watch. It's a YouTube one and it's kind of like an overview of classroom. That particular gentleman, I love using videos where the speaker has some kind of novel accent. I find that it's easier for me to tune in. I don't know if that's true for others. I I did find that with my students that it worked. Um, it seemed to be a way for them to, to focus a little bit better. So I use them as often as I can when it's a good video. 
one is more of a read watch, the um, definitive classroom review. It's basically a view of Google Classroom, like you're going to buy it in a store, but um, which makes no sense to me because it's free. But it's put out by Teachers of Science, and so that has a little bit of videos embedded into it and a good article to go through. And then this here is if you're like, Susie, this is all boring. I know all this. Why am I here? Or um, I've made it through all of those things and I still have time. Down here, it's a G Suite bingo. It's not just limited to Google Classroom. But I love the idea of bingo boards. I use them a lot with my students. I've used them with you people. I use them for a lot of fun things. So this is a G Suite bingo board. It kind of gives you challenges that you can try that have to do with all of the different tools in G Suite. And bonus, at the bottom, it also allows you to download your own template so that if you want to make a bingo board, you can do so. It's great for people being able to work independently. It's very similar to the challenge-based PD I did in the last session, except for it's disguised as a bingo board. So it is 1113. I hope you made a great wish. Don't tell anybody what it is. And so I'm going to give you time to make your way through those links. I'm here if you want to type in the chat. I'm here if you want to unmute your mic and ask a question. I'm here for the people in the room. So if I walk away from my screen, I'll let you know that. And um, let's see what we can do. If you have questions, go ahead and ask them. Oh, look at you're all clicking on the link. I can see all of your little icons. You're so cute. I did say I was, I already recorded this, right? I think I did. Let me double check that. I am. Susie? Yes? Um, pain in the ass, Patty here. Quick question. Um, wh what do I do now? I have this feel free to take notes and add resources. So I'm clicking on the yeah. link, but nothing's happening. Um, so when you click on that, you're going to see underneath it, you'll see the link pop up. Okay, because every time I click on it, I get it, I go to a different screen. All right, so I'll just go back and tr try all over again. Uh, and I can always send you in an email if that's easier too. Uh, no, I don't even know where I am. There we are. Uh, come on. Come on. Hi, Susie. When I click on it, it doesn't come up either. Yeah. There's nothing. It doesn't do anything. It's like. All right. So if you highlight it and drag your mouse across it, don't delete it. And then do command copy or control copy to can see, control C to copy it. And then go to a new tab and then vomit. Control V. We'll Hello there. there, and Ooh. welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, she is loud. Does that work? And what I'll do is I can send it in an email too. So I'm going to copy all of it. Oh, um, I can't get on it. Yeah. Try a different link. Or anybody who is, because um, I see there's like 17 different little icon thingies on there. Maybe we can click away from it, and that might help too. Or try another one, see if another one works. You don't have first, I think you're trying to get on via Susie's screen share. Are you guys absolutely a thousand percent positive that you're on your own document, not on hers? And the way that I get back to mine is I just keep minimizing, 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 and then all of a sudden, ooh, there's the, there's the document that I, I had to go through her matrix and I'll put it in the chat again. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. For, Forrest, could also, you... had, we can mute this, right? So that, yeah, we can mute this. All right. I just put the link in the chat again, and that will open it up in your own separate tab. Thank you, Chris Hill, where you can then click on it yourself. If you're Thank trying you. to, there you go. Let's see if it works. There we go. All right. That worked. Woo, thank you. It takes a village. If 
you're just coming in, I'm putting the link into the chat that brings you to this Google Doc. This is about Google Classroom, which I readily admit you people know way more about than I do. Um, but I wanted to make sure I offered some resources for you to read or to watch or to try. So this list of resources in the Google Doc, if you click on the link in the chat, it will bring you there and then you can make your way through those that apply to you. can't hear anything. They just turned the fan on in my room extremely loud. Oh, no. Right if you need to hop out and then watch it on in syndication, <laughs> you can do that later, too. Or you can go right to the dock and just work without the zoom on. That's okay, too. Access this again. Please send me another email with the link. Robin, are you opening it separately or trying to click on it in the actual um, Zoom meeting? No worries. If you want to go off and work on your own and come back, you can. If it's hard to juggle having the Zoom open and the work that you're doing open, by all means, hop out and come back because I'll be here. <laughs> and that might make it easier to access the links too. I'm just going to quickly. Susie, I don't know if everyone has um, the new windows, but they can Uh, to be able to split the side of that is an option. I don't know what the device is on it. Um, trying to manage what she knows is tricky. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me try this again. Copy. Send. All right, closing that back here. Okay.
I just muted all of you, but if you have a question, feel free to unmute and ask it. And like I said, you can have your video on or off, totally up to you, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to take a, lo a loop around the library and I will be back in front of my screen in a minute. Oh, I can take my mask off. So if you're just coming in, when you go to, let me just um, copy the link again. Oops, copy and into the chat. Everyone, here's the link to the Google Doc that we're using. If you scroll down to the bottom of it, when you get there, you can explore some of these links. You guys are way, um, way more advanced in Google Classroom than I am. I'm not gonna pretend to teach you anything that um, I know more than you, because I don't. So that's why I tried to come up with a good selection of things that are out there about Classroom. But if you have specific questions, you can unmute and ask them. You can type them in the Google Doc, um, whatever works. Some people are sending me questions directly in the chat. You can do that privately or to everyone, whatever works for you.
I have to switch spots so I can get my computer. It's 11.30. I'm going to give, give you about another 10 minutes to play. So after that 10 minutes, we'll do about a minute of any Q&As or if you want to share out something you discovered or was helpful so that we can be ready to wrap up by 11.50. Okay, I'm glad. Yes. Give you about another eight minutes. It's very tempting as a teacher to just fill space with the noise. So for me to be quiet. The challenge.
of four minutes. Uh, two minutes. I got a concussion this summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One minute. Some of you might still be watching a video or reading something, but I'm going to pull you back as best I can. What I'd love to have you do, because I know there was not enough time to see, read, and do everything on that list, is if there's something that stood out to you that you didn't know before or something that you think you're going to use or that's going to come in handy or that it made you think of Google Classroom in a new light, knowing that everything is in a new light, um, feel free to either share in the chat or unmute or um, share out loud. I would love to know some of your thoughts, especially from the people who use it all the time. Is this thing on? <laughs> 
I'll speak up, Susie. I Go think that the organizing it by the week is um, brilliant. <laughs> I, I just, we, we used it a lot in third grade and um, we organized it by subject area, but I found that kids were like, well, what, what am I supposed to be on this week? What am I supposed to be doing today? So I think that was great. Good. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Did anyone check out the bingo board? I'm gonna click on it. So bingo boards, like I said, is a, it's a great teaching tool because it gives kids choice. It allows them to work basically independently unless they need help from you. Um, this particular one is to get you more used to Google tools. It could be a way for you to get your students up to speed on some of the tools that you're going to be using in your classroom. So even though it has Google tool stuff in here, and I thought maybe you'd want to try some of them, even if you just get the idea of how to create a bingo board for your own teaching, I think that it's, it's a fun version of um, basically a playlist. Again, providing that choice. You can always design it so that you have certain things in certain places so that if you're asking them to do a certain row or a certain letter or a certain shape on the bingo board that you know they're gonna hit the ones that you really want them to hit. Um, but it still gives, it gives them some choices to what order they do things in. From, it was funny because I learned, I'm learning too, as you guys are in here trying to learn about skills, I'm trying to learn about what it's like to do this whole, this whole adventure. So A, I can't multitask on my computer because I'm sharing my screen with you. So I can't be like checking my email or um, getting someone into power school that needs help. I can't do any of that because I'm sharing my screen the whole time with you, which kind of relegates me to my phone, which is not a good look for a teacher in front of their students. Um, <sighs> but I used it to take notes as to <laughs> what I wanted to say when we were done. Um, so I can't multitask. I can hear folks leave, which for me is fine because I know you're gonna have to come and go. You have meetings and all kinds of stuff or you may realize, hey, I know all this, I'm out of here, or this is boring, see ya. Um, but you're gonna know, wanna know those sounds when your students are coming and going as well. It doesn't tell me who's leaving, but then when the screen shows you asking to come back in, then I have an idea of who it might've been. The silence is really compelling because it's so quiet here. The people that are working in front of me, you know, they're watching videos or they're reading articles. I don't want to be like, hey, hey, how's it going? You need me? Do you need me? Do you need me? Um, I've given them stuff to do that are that's going to help them. So if my design is thoughtful to begin with and I'm putting things in front of them to explore or listen to or read or watch, then they're not gonna need me at that moment unless they have trouble reading or watching. Um, so allowing them to be quiet is, is tricky. And then the silence on the computer is woo, to know that there's like 40 something people in here and that there's no sound coming out. I did get a few instant messages um, was, was helpful because it's like very lonely sitting here. Even if I get up and walk around, I'm loving that you're putting comments in the chat. That's awesome. Some of you are still checking things up. I know I put too much in there for just a half hour of exploring. Um, bingo board, yay. Um, the tips on the first video, I'm glad that you're liking the organizing one. A lot of you have asked for help with organizing classroom. It can become unwieldy, much like Google Drive. Um, so I'm glad that that was helpful. What else did I put? my list. Um, I'm starting to think of other ways to monitor what you're doing as students. Not so much because I need to know what you specifically are doing, but if I were a teacher and needed to monitor, like I know that you're out there doing what's on this list because you're grown-ups, but if you're not, I would love to be able to know what they're doing. So I'm trying to think of ways that I can monitor that as a teacher. So stay tuned. We'll see how I work that out in the coming days. I think I'm going to use slides for some of it. The, um, all the little pegs that are on the quotes when you look at them in the Zoom meeting look like the little pegs that go in the life cars, like the game of life when you put the pegs in and you have babies. I, that was just a random thought. And then I'd love to know how you're doing because it's so quiet here. So if you want to stick that in the chat, we have 
um, another four minutes of Q&A if you have anything, and then at 10 of, um, you're free to go. Well, you're free to go anytime, but I'll stop the recording at 10 of. So any other thoughts, questions, ideas, don't be shy. You don't have to turn on your video if you don't want to. Susie, it's Chris. Um, I, I had a real, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for students moment when I started because I, I was clicking all the links and first of all, the, the device that I'm on was being ridiculously slow. Um, but then as I was trying to look at each thing, it was uh, um, like, a, I, oh my gosh, that video is 18 minutes long. I can't do that. I have to go to the next thing. And then like scrolling through their blog post. It, it was like when you go to um, somebody's blog with a recipe and you're like, I don't care about the story of how you created this thing. Can I just have the ingredients and the directions? Yep. And, and I, I was feeling like I don't want to do that to kids with putting stuff on, on Google Classroom or on, you know, in my playlists or whatever and have it be like, they're going to look at it and go, nope, too much. Yep. And, and then it became really difficult to do anything. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm very <laughs> I don't know what to say from there, but that's, that was just like my, how, how I, I was perceiving everything in this, in this particular hour. That's not I, that I don't appreciate all the stuff I do. I'm okay. just, yeah, I'm feeling like I don't, you know, there's stuff that I know how to do. And I know that there's more that I don't know how to do in classroom. And so it was more of a, I just want something that says, here are the things you need, Chris. And I didn't know how to find it. Yep, so. exactly. And that's, I, I feel the pain from the other side, like trying to provide that level of individual, you know, content is very tricky. And I'm the same way. Like, I think that there's an abbreviation for it, like TLDR, too long, didn't read. It's just very easy to have that feeling. And I feel it as a grown up all the time. So trying to come up with content or things for them to do, these are just plain old go and watch, go and read. But we're talking about being able to use some tools that allow you to make them more interactive. That's why I'm, as, you, as I was sitting here and it's so quiet and I don't know what you're doing. Like, I don't know if it's helpful or not helpful or if it's being watched or not watched. And again, it's not about you guys as adults. I'm trying to think of what would this be like with kids? What's it going to be like with a first grader, with an 11th grader? It's going to look so different in every capacity. And what's it going to look like with a remote learner and one that's just here today? And oh my goodness, it's very overwhelming. So you're having a hard time putting it into words and I am too, but I, I hear what you're saying. So Thank I'm hoping you. it didn't do well. This really was helpful though. <laughs> I mean, but I just, I was like, oh my God, I'm at the bottom of a well. Yep. So, so this but session might you. not have been about learning. You're welcome. This session might not have been about learning about classroom. It might have been learning more about the experience of learning remotely, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought that was helpful too, Susie, because when I looked at the links, like I clicked on the first one and I loved the pace of that video. And then when I got to the 18 minute one, I, I watched for a couple minutes and then I, the good thing was I was able to scroll it and see, nope, I don't need that and kind of go through it. But having the choice, I really like how you gave it uh, on um, a Google Doc so that we had the choice on like what to do and what not to do. Because I did the same thing as Chris. Like when I opened up the reading, I was like, oh no, this is too long. Let me go to the next video and see if that has something I need, you know? So that choice was good. Thank you. And I know also like thinking about it because um, say the, the one that the gentleman with the accent, there might be certain parts of his video that I find are more helpful than others. And as a teacher, I can always just post a link to those sections of videos so that you're not having to watch all 18 minutes. I'd love to have everything just be three minutes. 
And then it could be more or less like watch this snippet and then have a space where you have to answer a question or respond or tell me your thoughts. Again, I'm thinking more about you people as being kids in a classroom and not so much learners, because I know that you have the stamina more than a kid does for the most part, but um, trying to think about the best way to keep that engagement up, because that's, that's what's going to rule the, that's what's going to rule the year is engagement. The YouTube class, I'll be helping you guys figure out how to do all that, how to snip them down um, and make them more, more useful. I am going to stop the recording before I, did I already do that? I feel like I'm repeating myself. Stop recording? No, I hadn't stopped it. <laughs>